like to discuss today uh, the concept of cognitive dissonance. So the, the brain, our human brain is the tool which we use to think. Often our attempts at thinking are an attempt to gain understanding. We want to know why. Why do things happen? Throughout history, we can see many attempts to explain why things happen the way they do. One such phenomenon would be the weather. Up until very recently, most people believed that weather patterns were the result of supernatural forces. They believed that if they made offerings or obeyed special rituals, they could impact weather patterns. Often the leaders of such societies would allow these ideas to flourish understanding that this would add to their own power. If the weather behaved and times were good, the leaders could easily take credit for that. If the weather was not so good, there were droughts, floods, and natural disasters, these could be blamed on the fact that the people were not following their rituals sufficiently accurately. In this way, social structures were preserved during flush times as well as during the hard times. The leaders stayed on top and the common people were either thankful for their successes or blamed for their, th for their failures. At some times these social structures became very large, relatively unwieldy. The amount of propaganda required to prop up these regimes would increase dramatically over generations. The most unbelievable explanations were often invented to justify an incredibly unequal distribution of wealth and power. We can certainly imagine many uh, ancient societies in which the distance between the rich and poor would lead the poor to revolt. And yet this was only rarely the case. Social structures preserve themselves by virtue of their philosophical underpinnings no matter how bizarre. For instance, the social structure of ancient India involved incredible inequality amongst the people. The leader, who was also could be called the Maharaja, was thought of as a kind of god on earth. It didn't matter what he looked like or how he acted, everything he did was perfect and justified. So often the local leader, the local Maharaja, fought bitterly with his rivals. Usually the common people bore the, blunt, bore the brunt of his conflicts. Right? Any action taken by the leader was justified by virtue of the fact that his power came directly from a supernatural source. Stories of the most bizarre and cruel behaviors are common, and as always the leader was beyond criticism. On the other hand, there existed in the same society a large group of people who were so lowly they were considered untouchable. The untouchables were born in that role. There was nothing they had done or their parents had done that would cause them to be placed in this role. They were there because society had placed them there. They were considered so lowly, so beneath contempt as to be untouchable by regular people. These people were born in a condition that might be considered even worse than slavery. They lived their whole lives under this discrimination, and yet the social structure persisted for generations and generations. This was due to a fact that an explanation had been given as to why society was supposed to be divided up in this way. The explanation is torturously long, almost completely unbelievable but it answered the question as to why. Why are some born to rule and others born to suffer? Well, the reason has no basis in reality. The reason is a construct, sort of invented by those in power to help them maintain their power. This construct must have evolved over a long period of time, which is the only explanation as to how it became so complicated and so unbelievable. And yet it appears that enough, enough people would believe it. Certainly, if, if enough people had not believed in the explanation, 
as to why the social structure had become so unequal. They would have risen up, thrown out the leader, and decided on another method to divide up you know, their resources. But starving people continued to starve because they thought that was their lot. And the leader wasted their resources lavishly because that's what he thought he should do. Anyone looking in from the outside could see this social structure was based on faulty assumptions. All of the people involved in this society had exactly the same amount of intelligence as anyone looking at that society from the outside. But the difference, of course, is a difference of understanding why. Growing up within a social framework prepares the individual to accept the assumptions that underlie that framework. Seeing a social framework from a distant vantage point may allow a more nuanced analysis of the same assumptions. If we were to study the social structure in, existing in ancient India, we could be sort of righteously indignant. How crazy would it? How unfair? We may wonder how it is that this social structure exists right into the modern era, which it does. Yeah, the caste system. They still have it. Mm -hmm. We would certainly it can't get out. They mm -hmm. can't get out. We would certainly Unless feel. You marry out. You can't not allowed to marry. Oh, oh they weren't yeah. allowed to marry. Mm -hmm. We could certainly feel superior, right, about our own social structure. After all, we've created this very egalitarian society, haven't we, based on fairness and justice? Is that the way we live? Right? That's the way it's supposed to After all, we wouldn't let infants starve while mountains of food rot. Would we do that? No. Of course we do that. Right? We do do that? Sure. Well. Right? We live in a very advanced society. We could certainly, if we chose to, feed everyone in the world with what we throw away. And yet we choose not to. Right? Now anyone looking outside at our society would see that it's really quite as imbalanced, quite as unjust as any society that ever existed in history. 